Ward here at LearnTheHarmonica.com. Today we're learning an easy 12 bar blues solo. We're going to use a 10 hole diatonic harmonica in the key of C and we'll go through the tab and how to play it along to the 12 bar blues uh, throughout this lesson and make sure you stick around to the end because we'll have a full play along where you can play with me and follow the tab on the screen as well. So this is a solo which only uses four holes on the harmonica. There's no bends whatsoever, so it's absolutely perfect for beginners who are trying to learn a bit of blues. If you want to learn more about blues harmonica and you'd like a step-by-step -step course taking you through all the skills you need to know, then check out the link beneath the video where you can uh, follow my course. There's also a link to my backing tracks, including the one that I use in this video, and also the tabs for this lesson. Okay, so let's crack on with this solo. So you heard me play it right at the start of the video and you can see a tab now on your screen for this solo. Now I have spaced this out on top of a classic 12 bar blues structure and this is so that hopefully you can get a sense of the timing and where you are in terms of the blues structure as we go. So I will mention oh and this is on the one chord, the four chord, the five chord um, but don't worry if that throws you off you don't have to pay attention to that you can just think about the notes themselves. I'm not uh, a, an especially theoretical player I learned in a practical context so uh, if you're like me then the tab is the main thing you'll listen to and you just feel and hear the uh, timing of the phrases. Okay, so our first phrase is So one, two, three, four So what am I doing there? Well, we've got three draw, two draw, two draw, one draw, two blow, two draw Okay, and that phrase is played in the first bar of the 12 bar blues. So this structure that you can see, we're reading from left to right and from top to bottom. So we're going to go from that top left corner to the top right, and then we're going to go along that middle row, and then finally that bottom row. And each of those uh, little rectangles is a bar. So that first phrase takes up that first bar. And you'll see in the top left corner of that bar that it says uh, I or one, the Roman numeral for one. And that means it's on the one chord of the 12 bar blues. Now, this isn't a lesson on the 12 bar blues structure, um, but that's just something that I've put in there so that you can follow it if, if that makes sense to you. Um, I do have all the lessons on 12 bar blues structure. But the first four bars of the 12 bar blues are the one chord. So that phrase fits in our first bar. Now, I think the difficult part of this phrase, if you're a complete beginner, might be that last note. And the reason is that it's kind of not where you might think it would be. So we've got... So one, two, three, and four, and... So it's actually between the fourth note of the bar and then the first note of that next bar. So you might be tempted to go... I don't know if you can hear the difference there, but I've, he I've waited to play that last note on the first beat of bar two. So that two draw would actually be in that second bar of the diagram, if you played it like that. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not what we're aiming at here. And the great thing about playing it on that kind of midway point between the beats or that kind of upbeat, rather than on the first beat of that next bar, is it gives it a lift. It sort of lifts that phrase somehow, that lick. So if you can, try and put that uh, in that first bar, not falling into the second bar. And that means that the second bar is completely empty. We've got nothing there 
and then the third bar we play the same phrase again and then we leave the fourth bar empty again. So we've got uh, that lick A and then a gap, lick A and then a gap. So I'll play the first four bars. One, two, three, four. Now, I'm going to let you hold that last note of that phrase, both times, as long as you want to. So in theory, you could actually hold that for the whole of the next bar. I think I held the first one a little bit longer, the second one not. So I'm not actually determining the length of that note for you. You could leave it nice and short. second time I've held it basically for that whole next bar. So that's up to you. So on to our next phrase, lick B, and this falls on the four chord, so you can see the Roman numerals four in the top left corner of bar five. So the uh, backing track I was using, the chord changes at this point. So with a G blues, as this is, we've gone from a G now to a C chord. And the phrase we're gonna play, is four blow, three blow, three draw, four blow. So one, two, three, four. And a one, two, three, four. And then the next bar, which is still on the four chord, we're gonna play the same thing, but we're gonna finish on a two draw instead of a four blow. So if we put those two together, one, two, I'll do it a bit slower. One, two, three, four. Okay, and notice that the last notes of the um, phrase, again, I'm playing them on that upbeat. So they're not actually hitting on the beat. Again, if we did hit them on, if we kind of waited and hit them on the next beat, I think we'd lose something of the life of the solo. So you'd get. And I don't think that's as cool as. So a couple of things I just want to mention before we look at the next lick. This thing of the upbeat or the half beat, the first thing to consider is that in some of the other licks and in lots of licks, we might have those half beat notes in the middle of a line. And I think they're kind of easier to play in the middle of a line as a beginner. So the first line. So that one draw is between two beats. And I didn't even tell you that earlier because I think it's easier to do it there. Whereas as a beginner, it, there's a temptation to want to finish on the beat. I don't know why that is. It's simpler musically, perhaps. Um, but you'll notice that it's more difficult at the end of a line. The other thing which you might be wondering about is if you understand this idea of an offbeat. So offbeat or half beat, the idea is that you're playing the note halfway between two beats. But you might have noticed that I'm swinging it. So the reason for that is we're playing this in a shuffle groove. The backing track is a shuffle backing track from my uh, backing tracks album, which you can buy. And what happens with a shuffle and lots of other grooves is that that half beat is delayed. So instead of one and two and three and four and, you're going one and two and three and four. So it's actually shifted uh, so it isn't quite in the middle. So I've mentioned up, upbeat or halfbeat, and you're thinking, well, that isn't halfway between. That's why. It's part of the groove, it's part of the feel of the music. Okay, back to the tab. So our next lick, or our next phrase, is actually a repeat of line A. And that is a common thing to do when you return to the one chord. So we're returning to the G chord and we're gonna play the same lick. So bar seven of the 12 bar blues, we'll play that. 
again. And then our next lick, we're going to go to lick C, and it sounds like this. So basically, four draw, uh, sorry, three draw, four draw, <laughs> I can't even say it. Three draw, four blow, four draw. And I, I did a little hand wah there on the four draw. Okay. Uh, and the timing of this, well, in bar eight, we've got one, two, three, four and one. Okay. Two, three. Okay. And we're holding that four draw for the whole of bar nine. So that's the five chord right in the bottom left hand corner of our kind of diagram. And I put four dashes after it, so hold it for four beats. So if I go from the start of bar eight, one, two, three. Obviously, if I wasn't clicking, I could do my hand while. You don't have to do that. I've not put that in the tab um, in the uh, 12 bar diagram, but you can, can do that and uh, you can get a nice little sound with that. So three bars to go and we have just got, well, two phrases that kind of stretch over those uh, three bars. So on the four chord here, bar 10, we're going to play... And then the uh, last note of that line actually runs into the one chord, two draw. So, okay. So our timing: one, two, three, four. Da 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 da. da. We've got a triplet in there. So the notes are four blow, uh, four blow, three draw, two draw, two draw. Okay, so we said that before. But what's happening is we're holding the four blow for three beats. So one, two, three, and then we play a triplet. So three notes in the space of one beat. Uh, and then we finish by playing that two draw. And we're going to hold that two draw probably for two beats. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and a one. One, two, three, four, and a one. One last time. And then our final lick starts in bar 11 and finishes in bar 12. So we've got... So we have two draw, two draw, two draw, two blow, one draw, one draw. And this is kind of a classic turnaround line. So often with a 12 bar blues, there'll be an extra little five chord added in towards the end, maybe for just the last two beats of this last bar. Sometimes it might take the whole of the last bar, but the most basic form is to just hold that one chord. Uh, but using an extra little five chord is often you, uh, called playing a turnaround, because it kind of turns you back uh, to the start of the 12 bar blues ready to keep going. So this is like a classic line which fits with that. It also fits just with a one chord, it's okay for that. But it fits really nicely if there is a sneaky five chord added in. Which I haven't put in the diagram, but is very common. So in terms of timing, on that bar 11, we finished the previous lick with that two draw. So that's the first two beats. Our next uh, phrase starts on that next beat, so beat three of that bar. So one, two... So if we played into our um, line E from line D. And 
I've noticed that we're finishing on that upbeat again. Because if we went, it's just, I think it sits heavier. It doesn't, I don't think it sounds as impressive and light and doesn't float over the music quite in the same way. So I'll just play those last two lines again. So I'm going to go from the four chord, uh, bar 10. So one, two, three, four. So that's all there is to it for the tab. So we're going to finish the lesson by having a play along to the backing track. This is a backing track that I sell as part of a, a whole set, a whole album on my website. There's a link in the description. And also if you want step by step lessons taking you through loads of different solos and blues techniques, then check out my premium course. There's a link in the description to that as well. So I'm going to stick this backing track on. It's a classic shuffle blues in the key of G. We can use our C harmonica to play along with it and see if you can play along with me and follow the tab on the screen. One, two, three, four. <laughs> easy 12 bar blues solo. If you'd like to download the tab then check the link in the description where you can get that from my website. I hope that helps you to learn it and do check out the premium course and backing tracks as well. Let me know what you've thought of this lesson because I don't usually do the whole structure of the 12 bar blues as part of the lesson. It's not the way I tend to think of things. I, I tend to um, use my ears for the timing and, and just think about which notes I want to play. But I'm aware that a lot of you come from more of a theoretical background. This is my bodge job sort of compromise way of, of not actually using sheet music, but maybe giving you a little bit more of a visual representation of the timing. So uh, let me know in the comments what you what you'd like about that and you know what you think I could do to keep improving and uh, helping you to learn better. Until I see you again, good luck with your practice. I'll see you soon. Cheers.